the happy food chef Robin Joy with Planted Places and we're doing our monthly get together where I get to interview Robin and I get to find out what we're doing with the Planted membership right now. What types of recipes are we coming up with? What are the tips in the kitchen that you're sharing? And I, I wanted to do this um, live with everybody because I really, I wanted to show like, here's my abundance of herbs that people kind of think about holidays and they think about herbs. And so I went around to the test gardens and I pulled off different herbs that are growing, that are happy. You would think it's summer, <laughs> but it's not, you know, I'm in Northern California. It's, it's pretty cold at night and they're just happy. And now I think a lot of that is, you know, when you grow in the plant of law, you plant in containers, they're close together. You create little microclimates. And so they actually can weather the, the coldness a little bit better. But um, what I would love to do is, you know, it's holiday time and on Planted Places, we are doing some fun holiday gifts that we are um, selling for people because everybody's got the friend who wants to either loves to garden or wants to learn how to garden and they're a little nervous. And so we do have herb kits for like buy one, get one 30% off. We got these fun things. So people go and look if you are cruising around and you see us right now because we've got some fun things going on through holidays. Um, so Robin, let's switch over and let's talk about what are some of the fun things you're doing for holiday and the, the cool season and things. And then I have right. some questions for you in terms of what to do that are entertaining. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is that time is upon us and we are back in the holidays and it is time to stay warm. And to me, it's all about comfort food. You know, this is you're with your families, everybody's cooking. You want to have and eat delicious food that's comforting, but you want to also be happy, be healthy and not put a million pounds on. And that's yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> right. And that's what I'm all about. Yeah. So as a matter of fact, tonight um, we just uploaded all the photos and uh, pictures that are gonna be on the membership website. Um, and, and we did this amazing, because I love sandwiches, especially now hot sandwiches. And this one was instead of shredded pork, which you could use, but the vegetarian alternative that I made for this particular recipe was I took in a shredded sweet potato, oh. right? And it goes a long way. This is a really great dish for, for saving. I mean, you can, we got two and a half meals out of one, one potato. Oh, wow. Us, two of us eating, two adults. And basically, you know, in your food processor, your shredder, we have all those little holes. Mm -hmm. um, think on the videos, you know, you shred your sweet potato. And then we do, what I did was I did a water saute with the sweet potato, onion, garlic, um, and then to cook it. And then I made a homemade barbecue sauce, which we will do another video of making a, a from scratch barbecue sauce. This had fresh ginger in it because this time of year, you know, for health, fresh ginger is so good in, in our food and it gives us warmth. So there's fresh ginger in the barbecue sauce with, you know, real onion, fresh garlic. Um, it's just out of this world. Oh, that I made slaw with a, a, a red cabbage slaw with cilantro. Um, with a gorgeous lemon, a sweet lemon vinaigrette dressing, and all on a gluten-free bun. We are very fortunate here to have a gluten-free bakery that makes the most amazing gluten-free goods ever in yeah. paleo and, and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, to me, this right now, this season is all about comfort food. So that's what we're going to cover. That sounds delicious. I, honestly, Robin, I think I'm going to go ahead and just post it on our Facebook public page as well, because yeah. people, it's almost not fair to talk about it, but not show them. <laughs> and, oh, right? that's, it's so good. It is so, so good. Oh, that's yeah. good. And I think the ginger is so important because you're right. That's, that's one of those in terms of, of dietary and inf helping with inflammation. It's just good to always have ginger in your diet when you can. So when you can sneak it in like that, I love that. And I love that spice it gives. Yeah. yeah, it's great pairing with the slaw, with the cilantro and lemon. I mean, you've got, it's nothing but goodness in this dish. So, and real quick, you mentioned, just because I think this is an interesting tip, you said that you did a, you um, you took the sweet potato and some garlic and you did a, a water boil. Is that what, yeah, what did you just real quick, what did you do with Okay, and I actually, there's a video. Oh. Where I show, and there are photos, so you'll see it. Perfect. Um but it's in a pan. I took the shredded. Um, potato 
mm -hmm. raw, raw, with yes. fresh garlic and, and some sweet chopped onion. Okay. And then water. No, no oil. And I do a, it's called the water saute. So it's only a small amount of water and you keep, you keep adding a little water until it is cooked. And it doesn't take long because the potato is really shredded. Ah, okay. So it doesn't take long to cook at all. So what is it like 10, 15 Five, minutes? Oh, less, no more than 10 minutes. Oh, no okay. And it's so good. And then you just get that cooked, you make your slaw, your, your sauce. Mm -hmm. High bun and it's just this is wonderful because it also sounds like it's a quick it's a quick meal it sounds like you also probably make extra so that you can actually make multiple yeah. meals out of it yeah yeah great That's i'm so all simple. about that in the holidays because you're busy right you, you you need meals that you can you can extend over one day okay now a couple of days so let me um i have some questions for the holidays because you know i as you know i am a baker i love to bake and so what what can we what are some tips for you know we want to bake but we want to keep the sweets out we want to keep the pounds off but we also want to keep that you know one thing that's so great i just will say as a side thing by growing leafy greens so many leafy greens and lettuce and such uh, all the time you know i literally some people take a coffee break i go outside my my walls and i pull off like arugula like a mizuna i just that's so my my palate has changed it's not i don't really crave sweets as much as i used to which is really interesting right but i'm really worried that when the holidays come you know what i mean <laughs> you start seeing eating those again and then it just changes all the goodness i've done for the last you know for the last year or so what are some good tips for how do we keep try to keep the sugar level down in our sweets that we're making okay well i don't want to think of necessarily keeping the sugar level down what i want to think about is keeping the sugar level healthy okay that's fair <laughs> Okay, yeah. we cut out the white sugar. Mm -hmm. not in my kitchen, I don't have it in my kitchen. All I have in my kitchen are essentially I have some honey, okay. maple syrup, but mostly I use dates yeah. and date, um, and I make date paste. And in fact, I think somewhere we have a video where I show how to make date paste and it's very simple you you essentially and i only use module dates with okay. the pit with the pits in there oh with the pits why with, with the pits okay i buy the ones with the pits because they are when you buy them with the pits out they're so dry oh, they, yeah. they dry out yeah. okay so once so i buy them with the pits then i take the pits out oh okay okay Got it. Right. Yep. So those are the dates that I use, and and you can get them. You know, they're they're not that expensive, really, for because they go a long way. And if you need a really quick snack, my favorite snack. If you're really in a hurry, you need something sweet. You always keep some sort of nut butter, almond. But I like almond butter, so I always have almond butter on hand. I take a module day. I take the pit out. I put in half a teaspoon of, of almond butter inside the date and I eat that and mm -hmm. it is to die for because it fills you up you have two of those you're done you're sweet oh, yeah, too the yeah and that that almond butter that yeah, really almond fills you up yes it, yep it's the glycemic function yep. of the date down but you don't even have to worry about that with dates yeah. so that's number one is a very quick snap but um to well, me well, then when you paste if you have a food processor you take date okay you let's say you take uh, a dozen dates right or mm -hmm. 20 whatever and you make a batch of date paste you take them you first boil some water pour it over the dates with the pits in it let them soak for 10 15 20 minutes okay then keep the keep the water keep the water that they soaked in because they're organic dates you take the pits out and the ends off then you put the dates in the food processor with some of the water mm -hmm. that they soaked in a little bit of it not a lot and you run your processor until it's smooth and that makes date paste that then you can add into any of your recipes wow okay so the, i love this thank you so this is such a benefit for everybody listening so now is, what is the ratio so if i'm going to substitute my date paste for the white sugar that's in the recipe well, how do i think about that well, usually, I would say 
that if you're going to use and make a date paste, mm -hmm. it, it does two things. Um, I'd have to really see the recipe. Okay. Yeah. If you make it a date paste, you're adding moisture to the recipe. Mm -hmm. right. Sugar, sugar doesn't yeah. totally dry. Yeah. So this is totally different. Now, if you're using date sugar to swap out for white sugar, which you can do, okay. you need more. You'll need more of the date sugar to get the same amount of sweetness. Yeah. And I, I noticed there was another recipe that you did a while back and it had dates in it. And I noticed just what's really nice about it is that because you're using the dates instead of the sugar, the texture, it's just, it's more moist. It's just, I, I love the texture more. It was, um, yeah, I would, yeah, that's, a, so it's kind of like, it says you kind of got to play around with it a little bit, um, I would imagine when you're kind of swapping. Yeah. It yeah. Well, it is because if you're going to swap it for sugar in a recipe, Again, you would have to, I would say that you would be using your date sugar, yeah. not a not a date paste, because yeah. then you're gonna look at if it, if you're adding that much more moisture, maybe then not look at what else you're using in the recipe. Are you using eggs? Because you could maybe use one less egg, or if you're using milk, you could use a little less milk. If mm -hmm. you're using oil, you certainly can use less oil. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what that recipe is yeah that makes sense that does make sense and i do notice that oftentimes you'll see oats you'll see oats with the date like you'll see you know i notice you see kind of you usually have a different combo when there's date dates in a recipe versus not I've and i don't know if you had time to make the uh, cookies that i made did you make not yet i'm doing it this weekend can't wait well the thing about that recipe um and and i'm happy to post this we can post it if you want sure. we the will. thing about this you can bake it or you can have it as a raw dessert you can use it as a crust you can use it as a crumble wow there, so you can use it and layer it up in a parfait you can do so much with this basic recipe and then you can switch things out in the recipe so it's a really incredible recipe to work with Oh, I love it. Okay. And we will, I, I think we, we will post that as well, because I just think that that for the holidays, that's such a perfect thing. Uh, it is. Just you, like you just said, you could really, like you said, it's a foundation and you kind of create a pie crest is the first thing I think of because <laughs> pies, holidays, you're making pies, you're bringing it to the yeah. crumbles because now if you have fruit, yes, apples are in season, your pears, a pear tart, um, you know, or a pear crumble. Yeah. Any of you, it's just, and, and even your cranberries, you can make a gorgeous cranberry. I, I did the raw cranberry sauce, but you could take that and cook it. And I mean, you could make a cranberry uh, crumble with it. That would be out of this world. So I want to just say to everybody, because we did actually put that in our, in one of our blogs, that recipe, your relish, your cranberry relish raw, it was delicious. And I cannot tell you how easy it was to make. <laughs> it's like, and I was very excited because my sister, who's probably going to be watching this at some point, she brought her recipe by, I made mine like literally 10 times faster than hers. <laughs> and I thought it was better. I was very excited. I'm like, mine was so much lower maintenance. <laughs> We had a little recipe, we had a little competition going on. <laughs> so thank you for that. That's why I texted you in the middle of Thanksgiving to tell you. <laughs> All right. So good. Well, very good. So Robin, let's, I think we'll kind of finish up because we've been going for a while, but um, thank you so much as always. And You're welcome. Um,